Hi there, my name is Caitlin Bandy and this is my channel Bandy's Books and today we are here to do my favorite video of the month and that is my book of the month prediction video. Today we're going to be predicting the books for April 2024. Guys, where is this month even going? I can't believe we're already doing our fourth prediction video for 2024. I feel like it was just New Year's and somehow like the first quarter of this year is already over. This month is really loaded with lots of books. We have a solid amount of books for all the different genres, but in particular, the literary fiction and contemporary fiction section is pretty heavy with some really good books. So let's not delay any further. Let's jump straight in. We're gonna be starting out with the historical fiction genre. My first selection for this genre is Village Weavers by Miriam J. A. Chansey. This currently has a 4.00 and 26 ratings on Goodreads so far. 1940s Port-au-Prince. Childhood friends Gerti and Cici are on the opposite ends of the economic spectrum, but they build a deep and lasting friendship. That is until a deathbed revelation tears them apart. Across continents and decades, they are parted and reunited multiple times. I selected this book for book of the month because they have previously featured Miriam J. A. Chansey for her book, what Storm, What Thunder. And I love that Chansey's writing focuses on Haiti, a country that I think should get more literary attention for sure. This book sounds really interesting. I love that this is set in 1950s Port-au-Prince, that we have this friendship between two people from different backgrounds, and that this is going to span such a long period of time in so many different places in the world. This sounds like a fantastic read, and I would love to see it as a historical fiction selection. Then we have Your Presence is Mandatory by Sasha Vazilyuk. This currently has a 4.57 and about 35 ratings on Goodreads so far. Ukraine, 2007. Yefim Shulman, beloved husband, grandfather, and war veteran, dies. Days after his death, his wife finds a letter to the KGB in his briefcase. It reveals a lifelong secret and the choices that he made to defend his country and his large Jewish family. I've selected this book for book of the month because this is a debut historical fiction novel. This sounds really interesting. I love that this is going to delve into World War II history, but revolving around the Ukraine. And I'm interested to see how this man is involved with the KGB. I feel like there's some mystery elements to go with this historical fiction. It sounds almost thrillery to me. I think this could be a really good read and I would love to see it pop up as a selection. Next up, we have the thriller, horror, and mystery genre. I have three selections today. First up, we have The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This currently has a 4.44 and 669 ratings on Goodreads so far. 18-year-old Bella has lived her whole entire life in the shadow of her mother's mysterious disappearance. The case is dragged up once again when the family agrees to be in a true crime documentary. But then Rachel Price reappears with an unbelievable unbelievable story of what happened to her, and Belle has a really hard time believing it. I've selected this book for book of the month because Holly Jackson has been previously featured for A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which was a smash success. She really knows how to write these like true crime based mystery thriller type books. And I feel like this one could be equally as successful. I do think it's a bit of a long shot because Jackson's a pretty big author with a pretty big following now, but I think it would be pretty cool to see book of the month selected. Then I have While We Were Burning by Sarah Kofi. This currently has a 3.75 and 114 ratings on Goodreads so far. After her best friend's death, Elizabeth's life is spiraling out of control. She hires a personal assistant to help keep her on track, but soon her assistant is digging into her best friend's death alongside of her. The assistant wants to know why the police killed her young black son, and Elizabeth seems to be the only person who can help her get her answers. I've selected this book for book of the month because this is a debut novel, and I feel like this is one of those thrillers that's gonna dig into some really relevant and deep themes. I think this is gonna be a little bit more than just your regular domestic thriller, and I love a book with a complex theme. I really hope that book of the month picks this one up. And then I have you Know What You Did by KT Nguyen. This currently has a 3.96 and 232 ratings on Goodreads so far. Annie grew up poor, but she seems to have it all now. When Annie's mom, a Vietnam War refugee, dies suddenly, Annie's life starts to unravel. The OCD, which she thought she'd gotten rid of years ago, comes back in full force with some disturbing fixations. When she is dragged into a missing person's case, her mind becomes increasingly fractured. I selected this book for book of the month because this is a debut novel and I think this one sounds really interesting. There's a lot going on with this plot and I love the inclusion of OCD in this. I read the author's note on this and she said that she herself, while she is not at all like her character in the book, she does have OCD herself. And so some of the depictions in this are based on her real life experiences, which I find kind of interesting. I think that this is maybe the least likely of the three to be picked, 
but I think it could be a really fun add-on and I would love to see a new author get some recognition in the thriller genre. After that, I have Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. This currently has a 4.23 and almost 14,000 ratings on Goodreads so far. For as long as they can remember, Jessica, Nora, and Alicia have been told how lucky they are. As young girls, they were rescued from family tragedies and raised by a loving foster mother, Mrs. Fairchild. But their childhood wasn't the fairy tale that everyone thinks it was. When a body is found under their old foster home, they're pulled in as witnesses or maybe even suspects. I selected this book for book of the month because Sally Hepworth has been previously featured for her book, The Soulmate. And I think she was a relatively popular selection. She is a pretty well-known thriller author and I could see book of the month picking up this book easily. If it's not a main pick, I wouldn't be surprised to see it at least as an add-on. After that, we have the romance genre and I have three selections this time. First up is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This currently has a 4.73 and about 2000 ratings on Goodreads so far. Justin is cursed. Every woman that he dates goes on to find their soulmate the second that they break up with him. When a woman slides into his DMs with the same problem, the two of them come up with a plan. They'll date each other and then break up, canceling out each other's curses, right? I picked this book for book of the month because Abby Jimenez would be a repeat author. She's been previously featured for Part of Your World and Yours Truly, the latter of which was featured as the book of the year choice for 2023. Abby Jimenez is a wildly popular romance author and I would honestly be shocked if this doesn't show up in the box at least as an add-on, but I am definitely leading towards this being one of the main picks. Then I have Funny Story by Emily Henry. This currently has a 4.5 Five, four, and just over 2,000 ratings on Goodreads so far. Daphne always loved the way that her fiance Peter told the story of how they met. That is, until he realized that he was in love with his childhood best friend, Petra. And that's how Daphne winds up alone in Michigan with her dream job and Petra's ex as her new roommate. I picked this book for Book of the Month because Emily Henry has been featured very successfully by Book of the Month several times over. She was featured for People We Meet on Vacation, Beach Reads, A Billion Junes, and When the Sky Fell on Splendor. Her books always seem to do really well. She is an incredibly popular romance author. I doubt that we'll see both Jimenez and Henry show up in the same box, but maybe Emily Henry will pop up as an add-on later in the month. And the third selection is The Library of Borrowed Hearts by Lucy Gilmore. This currently has a 4.06 and 101 ratings on Goodreads so far. Librarian Chloe Sampson has been struggling with life. She's just about at the end of her rope when she finds a book from the 1960s at her local flea market. Then her crazy hermit of a neighbor swoops in and offers to buy this book from her for an exorbitant price. When she sits down and flips through the book, she notices that the margins are full of notes from two lovers to each other. I selected this book for book of the month because this is a love story about books and what could be more fitting for a book club? Seriously, the cover of this book is perfect for book of the month. The content of this book is perfect for book of the month. And I feel like it's in the right genre because a lot of people that pick up book of the month are really into their romance picks. So I think this would be a win-win for everybody. Next up, we have the literary and contemporary fiction category. And I have so many selections for these genres today. So let's dive straight in. First up, I have The Cemetery of Untold Stories by Julia Alvarez. This currently has a 4.03 and a 92 ratings on Goodreads so far. Celebrated writer Alma Cruz does not want to end up like her friend, a novelist who fought so long and so hard to finish her book that it threatened her sanity. When Alma inherits lands in the Dominican Republic, she turns it into a literal cemetery where she can bury her untold stories. Alma just wants her characters to rest in peace, but they have other ideas and the cemetery becomes a sanctuary for their true narratives. I've selected this book for book of the month because Julia Alvarez is a pretty well-known author and I think that this is a really unique concept. Again, I think books about books and books about writing and storytelling seem to do really good with the book of the month audience. This has that element but it also has magical realism which seems to be very popular and I love that this is set in the Dominican Republic. There's so many things that sound really amazing about this book. I would love to see this be picked. Then we have Real Americans by Rachel Kong. This currently has a 4.25 and 327 ratings on Goodreads so far. On the precipice of Y2K in New York City, Lily, the flat broke child of two Chinese immigrants who fled Mao's cultural revolution, meets Matthew, the heir to a vast pharmaceutical empire. Despite their differences, they fall in love. 2021, 15 year old Nick Chen feels like he does not belong with his single mother on the isolated Washington Island. He feels like she's hiding something, so he sets out to find his biological father. I picked this book because Kong has been previously featured by Book of the Month for her book, Goodbye Vitamin, and that was pretty popular. 
This one sounds really interesting. I love that this is a dual timeline. I think that this will be a really interesting story. There's that mystery element of what happens to Lily and Matthew and how Lily ends up on lonely Washington Island. I think that this could be a really good book. And I know Book of the Month loves deep explorations of like family and family drama. Then I have Crooked Seeds by Karen Jennings. This currently has a 3.94 and 18 ratings on Goodreads so far. Deidre is living in a crumbling public housing unit in Cape Town, South Africa when she's contacted by the police. Her family home, which was recently reclaimed by the government, is now the scene of a crime after several bodies have been unearthed on the property. The detectives have lots of questions and the answers will force Deidre to confront her own shattered memories. I picked this book for book of the month because I think this is a little bit different than what they typically like to feature. I love that it's set in South Africa. I love that we have this kind of mystery crime element. I think this is going to have some historical elements in it too that could be very interesting and I think that this might be a really emotional read. I think it's a long shot but I would love to see this pop up in book of the month. Then I have The Limits by Nell Frudenberger. This currently has a 4.03 and 37 ratings on Goodreads so far. Pia's parents are divorced and living in two separate worlds. Her mother, a French biologist, is in Morea a tiny volcanic island off the coast of Tahiti. Her father is a surgeon in a New York City hospital, and he's recently married to a much younger woman. When Pia goes to visit her dad, COVID leaves her literally locked down with her stepmother, Kate. Meanwhile, Kate, a school teacher, struggles to connect with Pia and questions her ability to be a mother, while one of her students, Athena, is already parenting a toddler. As Athena struggles to finish her senior year online, she and Pia spiral towards parallel but inescapably different tragedies. I've selected this book because Frudenberger would be a repeat author. They were previously featured for Lost and Wanted, which did pretty well. This book sounds really interesting and I love all the things that are going on. There's a lot of different elements. I love that mom is off on this island of Morea near Tahiti. This is a place that I dream of scuba diving in some days. So I feel like just the setting has me interested in this book. But I also love that this deals with the COVID lockdown. We have two girls kind of spiraling towards tragedy. I think this could be a really emotionally moving read. Then we have The Spoiled Heart by Sanjeev Sahota. This currently has a 4.33 and 12 ratings on Goodreads so far. Nayan Olak is running running for the General Secretary of the Union after a tragedy took his family from him over 20 years ago. He finds himself strangely drawn to a woman named Helen that he keeps bumping into around town. As his involvement with Helen deepens, he unknowingly barrels toward long-held secret about how his and Helen's past are tenuously connected. I selected this book for Book of the Month because Sahota would be a repeat author who was previously featured for China Room and this one sounds amazing. The cover of this fits Book of the Month's aesthetic. This seems like it's gonna be really emotional. There's some mystery elements. I think that this could be a really smart literary fiction pick for Book of the Month. And my final selection for the fiction genre is The Funeral Crier by Wen Yan Lu. This currently has a 3.73 and 162 ratings on Goodreads so far. Avoided by fellow villagers because of the stigma attached to her job and unappreciated by her husband, The Funeral Crier has long ago accepted the mundane realities of her life. But just when things couldn't get bleaker, she takes a leap of faith and things take a surprising turn for the better. I picked this book for book of the month because this is a debut fiction novel and it sounds really interesting. I love the idea of working as a funeral crier. I also think that this is a debut that's getting a lot of buzz. I've been seeing it popping up on a lot of lists and in a lot of different places. And usually when I see books pop up this much, they get featured somewhere. Then we have the sci-fi fantasy genre. I have one selection this month and that's The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. This currently has a 4.39 and just under 400 ratings on Goodreads so far. Lucia Cotado toils endlessly as a scullion using scraps of magic to get through her tedious days. When her scheming mistress learns of her magic, she uses her for a simple amusement for bored nobility, until Lucia garners the attention of Antonio Perez, the disgraced secretary of Spain's king. Determined to seize better fortunes, Lucia dives into the world of magic, but the dangers grow that her Jewish blood will doom her to the inquisitions of wrath. I selected this book for book of the month because Bardugo was previously featured for both Ninth House and Hellbent. And I know that this book is not part of that series, but this still sounds like something that would do really well as a fantasy selection for book of the month. It kind of is giving me dark academia vibes, got that fantasy element with all the magic there. We've got a time set in the past that seems to be really popular. I just think that this book would do really well with the book of the month audience. Now onto the nonfiction genre, I have one selection and that is The Demon of Unrest by Eric Larson. November 6th, 1860, Abraham Lincoln takes a victory in a very tight presidential race. In the chaotic moments between his election 
and the Confederacy's shelling of Fort Sumter. There is a period marked by tragic errors and miscommunications, inflamed egos and craven ambitions, personal tragedies and betrayals. I selected this book for Book of the Month because Eric Larson would be a repeat author. He was previously featured for Dead Wake, The Devil in the White City, and The Splendid and the Vile, all of which were very popular. If you haven't read Larson before, he tells his nonfiction with a narrative like a fictional story, and it makes it so much more engaging and easier to get into. His books are wildly popular, and Book of the Month doesn't always feature a nonfiction read, but I think it would be silly for them to miss out on this one. And finally, we have the short story collection section of this video. I have one selection for short stories today, and that's Table for Two by Amor Towels. This is a collection of stories where two characters often find themselves sitting across the table from each other and where the direction of their futures hinges on what they say to each other next. I selected this book because Amor Towles has been previously featured by Book of the Month for Rules of Civility, A Gentleman in Moscow, and The Lincoln Highway, all of which have been very successful. The Lincoln Highway was, I believe, the 2022 Book of the Year selection. And while this isn't a novel, I think Towles' writing is beautiful in any form. I would be pretty surprised if Book of the Month skipped this one. So that's the end of my April 2024 prediction video. I hope that you found this interesting. I know we talked about a lot of books. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know how did I do. What books on here did you find interesting? What books on here do you think Book of the Month is likely to pick? Were there any books that you think I missed? Are there any books on this list that you're just like, absolutely not, there's no way Book of the Month would ever pick this? Tell me all the things about Book of the Month and what you think is gonna happen in April. And if you're not already subscribed to this channel, you know what to do, hit that subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell so that you never miss a video and that way we can see each other again soon. Thanks so much for joining, bye.